Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Dwork. I'm a PhD in electrical engineering from Stanford University and I'm a postdoctoral scholar at UCSF focused on medical imaging. And I wanted to talk to everybody about what to expect with the coronavirus and what our government could be doing for us. Many people have now become familiar with the S-curve. Grant Sanderson did a great job of explaining it. He's three blue, one brown. The S-curve comes from a differential equation that dictates exponential growth initially and then leveling off as the population becomes infected with the virus. Many politicians are now talking about flattening the curve and they've suggested social distancing in order to do so. In my area, they're now enforcing shelter in place, meaning we should stay in our homes unless necessary to go out. This is in an effort to stop interactions among people and prevent the virus from transmitting. Necessarily, this won't limit the number of people that get infected. All this will do is limit the rate of transmission. Without a surprising discovery, or a large portion of the population will get infected with this thing. And we should prepare accordingly. We want to try to flatten the curve so that the number of people that get infected and sick and need medical care don't overwhelm the capabilities of a medical system. You may have seen graphs like the one on the screen right now. There's a problem with this curve, and the big hint is that there aren't any numbers on it. I'll put a link to a reference below that shows if you just look at the number of ventilators we need, this is what the curve looks like. And you can see, in order to flatten the curve enough so that the number of ventilators satisfy the number of patients, we must flatten the curve out to 10 years. That's just looking at the number of ventilators. That's not considering any other limitations on our medical system. We're not going to shelter in place for the next 10 years. It's unreasonable to expect that. We must keep producing. We must produce food, for example. So we're going to go back to work. Okay, so what's the mortality rate of this thing? News organizations reported mortality rates of 3% or 2%. This was all sensationalizing and basically misquoting the director of the World Health Organization, who actually said that 3.4% of the people with confirmed cases of coronavirus died. So whereas the news reported probability of death given coronavirus, what the director of the World Health Organization actually said was probability of death given tested positive for coronavirus. Through this simple probability expression, I predicted that the death rate of the coronavirus would be upper bounded by about half a percent. And that's what we're now seeing, that the mortality rate of coronavirus is about half a percent. The problem is that half a percent mortality rate in the United States leads to 1.6 million people dying. That's a lot of people. And that's just from the coronavirus. That doesn't include people who die because they couldn't be treated by an overwhelmed medical system. Here's a logarithmic plot showing the number of cases for each country versus time since first infection. And what you're seeing here, for the vast majority of these countries, the systems haven't greatly affected the rate of doubling. The rate of doubling is basically limited between two days and three days. With very stringent requirements, the number of infections doubles every three days. With very lackadaisical requirements, the number of infections doubles every two days. So unless we go on extreme lockdown, I expect that the length of time it takes to double the number of infections is every two and three days, and the mortality rate will be proportional to that. Okay, given that's the case, what could be done? A big problem is that the number of medical staff are currently not infected, and so they're going to get sick at the same time that the population shows up. That is, people are going to come into the hospital sick, they're going to infect the medical staff shortly thereafter, the medical staff is going to get sick and they won't be able to treat patients at exactly the time that we need medical staff. Additionally, we're going to need all of this medical equipment at the same time. Already, hospitals in other countries are running out of ventilators. I've been told anecdotally that some hospitals in this country are running out of ventilators. We could clearly use additional ventilators in this country. So what's currently being done? People have self-quarantined. In my area, they've instituted shelter in place. Schools have been closed for the next two weeks. It seems to me that the government is hoping that in the next two weeks we limit the rate of infection enough that not too many people get sick. Somehow magically the weather warms up and that warm weather cures the virus. And by the time the end of the summer rolls around, we have a vaccine. There's a theory that in April, when it gets warm, 
uh, historically that has been able to kill the virus. You know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat, as the heat comes in. You know, in April, supposedly, it dies with the hotter weather. And that's a beautiful date to look forward to. Here I'd like to quote Mike Acton, who's one of the best engineers. He says, developing based on hope is not good engineering practice. I hate this plan. I'd much prefer our government were drastically ramping up and helping hospitals prepare in every way that they can. So here are things I suggest. Hospital staff aren't going to get sick all over the country at the same time. So some hospital staff will be immune while other parts of the country, the hospital staff are just going to get sick. We should temporarily permit licenses to travel across states so that hospitals in one state could hire medical staff from another if they're healthy and able to treat patients. This is already done routinely. It's called travel nursing. There's a limit on the number of travel nurses permitted in any hospital, for example. Temporarily, we should raise that limit and permit hospitals to hire more nurses and more doctors. Katrina Mulligan has suggested that Trump use the Defense Protection Act to prioritize the manufacturing of hospital equipment, especially ventilators in this country. I suggest that happen immediately. We should be encouraging anyone who's healthy to exercise to their ability. If you can take walks, go for a walk. If you can jog, go for a jog. If you haven't exercised in a very long time, now's a great time to do so. Do so not necessarily for your health, but for the health of the nation. If you require a ventilator, that's another person that won't be getting a ventilator. Build up your lung capacity now if you can in order to reduce the probability that you're going to need a ventilator and let somebody else use that very precious equipment. I highly suggest that public gyms increase their cleanliness dramatically. If you can avoid going to a public gym, do so. Instead of going and lifting weights, go out for a jog, do yoga at home, try to limit the rate of infection. Stay safe, keep your family safe, my best wishes.